tell you a true story to start with a true story. I, uh, I shaved my head a couple of days ago. <laughs> I... Yes, yes, I know, because uh, some of you are looking at me thinking, oh, that kid from diversity is shut up, but... Uh... <laughs> I do like you French people, you see, very protective of your language. Uh, anything that comes over from America has to be translated for you. Know? Even got your own version of the A-Team theme tune. Yeah. Ha, ha, ha. <laughs> ha, ha, ha. <laughs> Je ne sonde pas l'avion. Fou. Ah. Okay. And uh, the Flintstones was on when I was there going, Flintstones, rencontre les Flintstones. C'est la famille mondaine de l'âge de la pierre. Sing it with me. Uh, à la vie de bedrock. C'est un place de la histoire. I think it sounds erotic. <laughs> Allez, avec la famille My, my wife's mother was very patronising to me the first time we met. Uh, she took one look at me and went, Oh, your b -b 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 brummy. Well, to make you feel at home, we've built you especially an outside toilet. <laughs> but uh, her brother was very keen to meet me, though. He went, Oh, excellent. We're going to get a black man in the family. I'll be the coolest kid in the croquet team. I've got a homie. <laughs> and the uh, first thing he said to me was, uh, oh, oh, I hear your sort like to steal mobile phones. <laughs> Is it the ringtones that they appeal to your natural sense of rhythm? <laughs> One time. And he said, um, so what's more politically correct then? Should I say you're black or Afro-Caribbean? <laughs> and I said, no, no, I wouldn't want to mislead you. You see, these days, we prefer to be called Jigaboo Nignox. <laughs> so the next time you meet a black person, <laughs> So a few years ago, took him on a day trip to the Notting Hill Carnival. <laughs> he hasn't spoken to me since. He hasn't spoken to anyone. <laughs> Glad you liked that bit I once, uh, once told that story at a gig uh, in Salford, near Manchester. Guy came up to me afterwards, went, oh. <laughs> because he was a cat. <laughs> and, and he said to me, he said, I liked, I liked your Jigaboo Nignog thing. I didn't like that. Yeah, I didn't like your Jigaboo Nignog thing. Because uh, I hate black people as well. <laughs> sort of Mr. Point. And then he said those words, all comedians dread to hear, right? Here's one for you. 
What kind of key can get through any door? <laughs> A darky. <laughs> and um, I thought it through. I said, uh, I see what you're saying there. Saying a black person can get through any lock, known to humankind, instantaneously. <laughs> if that were the case, Nelson Mandela would have been freed. A whole lot of work. <laughs> <laughs> you know, imagine his prison guards, you know. We can't keep him in. He's like some sort of fucking chicken in the box. <laughs> Hello, I am out again. <laughs> I said, I said that this little boy, I said he's, he's three, and uh, I take him to toddler groups during the week, uh, proper, proper hands-on dad in, all, in that respect, and toddler group I take him to, it was only me, I'm the only dad there, the only dad there, all surrounded by mums. First time I turned up there, chief woman said, well, as it's your first time, dad, you can start the singing. <laughs> A bit of a misunderstanding, because uh, she meant nursery rhymes. <laughs> I thought I could sing whatever song I liked. <laughs> so they're expecting something like, The wheels on the bus go round and round. And I went, Is this the real life? Is this just fantasy? I went, come on, mums, let's do it for Friday! <laughs> and bless them, they did. Um, most of them carried on as if nothing really mattered. <laughs> <laughs> but one woman got a bit carried away, picked up a little one, screamed in its face, I sometimes wish you'd never been born at all!